for some hate true believers this is episode 10 10 is the magic number and uh, I'm gonna get into something today that um, you know as far as the whole merchandising thing with skateboarding goes you know it may have preserved many a thing uh, money skateboards and uh, you know in the end you know it just seemed it just weighted your skateboard down like it made it really heavy and it, it just it didn't it didn't I think it, it just destroyed like the true nature of what skateboarding is like grinding and wrecking your board and tearing the graphics off and doing all this kind of thing so this Hitler is going to go out to um, unnecessary plastic shit on your skateboard and this is something that you don't really see now you will see you know people you know my generation that that, uh, that do still have rails on their boards because they want to be able to you know do your fakey rail slide you know lock ups and come in or you know fakey rock and rolls and come down and I mean that's fine but what I'm talking about is larding your board down with every known plastic accessory known to man and this again falls back in the 80s now my first skateboard well I had a caster uh, with ACS, what the hell was the number on those things? ACS 500, two something. Otherwise, it was Cracker Jack trucks. They sucked. And Kryptonics wheels. And the board was like seven inches by like a foot and a half. And I learned on that. But my first real skateboard I got in the Christmas of 1984, it was a Rob Roscoff Santa Cruz. And it had, let's see, what did it have on it? I think it had tracker trucks, like black painted black uh, you know and I made sure that I went out and got rails and I got a nose bone and I got one of those 360 skid plate pieces of junk that you know go on the back I wanted to protect the board you know and I didn't know how long you know it was gonna last and I damn sure didn't want to wreck the graphics with a fist you know coming through the target so you know I just did that and a lot of people did I mean there were a lot of people you know and the first place that I wrote it was Swenson Park in Moorhead City. And there were a lot of people that had a lot of plastic junk on their boards, man. It was crazy. There was one guy there that had, remember, the, the bird, you know, the lapper, you know, so you can't, it just it just cheats. If you can't do a hang-up, and I mean, Mike Smith used to like, you know, you would see him like, you know, land and have to come in. You know, I don't know if that's lame or not, like grabbing, because McGill did it too, you know grabbing the tail to come in but if you can't do a disaster and unweight your back foot and come in smooth it just looks queer to me I didn't you know it's not something that I didn't learn to do it that way but you know problem solved like if you had the bird because you could just you could do and I mean if you look at like the old uh, Steve Caballero video at Winchester and um, in the old uh, skateboard madness film you know when he's doing you know he's hitting that wall after coming uh, through the washboard, you know, he's got a lapper on there, you know, and he slides and then just doesn't even have to worry about, you know, busting his neck, wrecking his neck even worse than it was, smashing his teeth out, I mean, even worse. <laughs> you know, they, they just didn't have to do it, but there was like one guy, like it, because it, we had a ramp, uh, like a half I guess it was like a quarter pipe for a while down in that flat area that I talked about, like at Swenson, for a while. And a guy had lappers on both trucks, inverted, facing each other, opposed. So now, not only he gets to cheat on fakie hangups, he gets to cheat on fakie rock and rolls. So he just does this with ease. You know, it's like, what are you taking all the gnarliness out of it? I never understood, like, you know, back in the back in the 80s when, when the skate park thing was, like, really going on. You had Winchester, Upland, Del Mar, uh, Marina Del Rey, all that. Everybody had copers. I mean, what's the what's the deal with that? All this plastic. You know, even Dwayne, Dwayne Peters. That That's 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 unbelievable that he would even, you know, go, I, well, I think I need to put these, these this stuff, like, on my board because you you know if you can't it's a helping hand to a grind is what it is and if, if, if the if the park owners go you know what you got to have copers we don't want to have to replace our coping like every five months like the turf did the turf skate park uh, in the Midwest then that's what you ended up doing but I mean God it was just you know and then like the copers you get there was those ones that were just 
plastic blocks and you snap I think it fit any truck I, I prefer to ride an Indy 169 some people prefer the two uh, the 216 I have one of those on one of my boards but the worst in the world was the tracker Cobra because you had to you had to take you had to take I don't know what you had to do you had to do all this man all the shit you know and you're you're it's got these little things that go into the back of the of the where the bearings are like on the opposing wheels and you had to put that I don't know if it was aluminum or whatever, but you had to put it in there. And I mean, at, at some point, I just went, you know, even Tony Hawk, all his, went to Del Mar, they were all using Cobras. I mean, could they not grind? Sure, they could not grind. Sure, they could. But it just, all the, like, punk rock gnarliness and, and, the, and the true joy of the, you know, the sound was, was just gone. And I mean, I remember reading a, um, an article, Mickey Alba, wrote in a, in a Thrasher issue that came out. It was like a back issue that I got. And uh, it was from 1982, and he was talking about Upland. He's like, man, I'm tired of these kids coming out here, like these people with their copas. Or, and I'm quoting him, their copers, their lappers, and all this plastic shit on their boards. Because you could see, you know, I mean, the, the graphics were all scuffed away, like from uh, Mickey's board, Steve Alba's board. All the graphics were, you know, gone and all that. And... You know, I don't understand like that, that why there was like that, that transitional period and then a resurgence of, you know, we're not going to put any more plastic on our boards. You know, we're not going to nose bones, gorilla bones, rib bones, tail bones. I mean, you've got enough bones to build a skeleton for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? It, it just, I mean, it was a marketing thing and, I, and I'm, it, you know, it ultimately like, you know, I would think companies would want to sell more skateboards, so don't put out a bunch of product that protects the skateboard. You know, because after a while, people were focusing boards, snapping them, in, and that's another hate letter. You know, let's just step on a perfectly good skateboard because we're pissed off and crush it, and then we get stuff product through the mail, so we're just going to put it all back together. You know, there ain't enough plastic that would protect all that stuff, and. Um, I don't know. I'm just glad to see all that gone. Like I like to see the big boards coming back, like the, especially like uh, some of those pocket pistol skates that are coming out. You know, they're like 11 inches. You know, seeing people ride those things or ride it, ride it with no rails, ride it pure, ride it from the heart, ride it with no copers, grind that coping, and it better be pool coping, not steel. You will see something that pisses me off about accessories. Uh, this board looks normal, right? Now, who in the world did that? I'm assuming my old man did, trying to make a dolly out of this old skate. Ruined a perfectly good skate. Look at that thing. God. I don't even think it's skatable. Used it so he could get under his cars, I guess. God.